Hi, I'm Paul, and welcome to this post-run stretch routine. It's gonna be short, sweet, and deep. You'll just need to have a yoga block. If you don't have a block, have a blanket or a book nearby. And this is round two of the post-run stretch routines. I'll leave a link in the description below for round one. I'll be adding many more of these to the channel. And there's also a playlist for runners and athletes. So you can do this after any activity. All right, let's get started. Let's get loosened up. We'll begin by coming to standing, and this is where you wanna grab a hold of your block or blanket or book. It's a great stretch for the calf muscles and hamstring. So we'll start with the right foot, the ball mounds of the foot up on the block, and then folding forward, you'll bring your hands either to the floor or some kind of prop, even a chair in front if you're really tight in the hamstring muscles, you can bring your hands to a chair. And then we bow forward here. It's a short stance. The left foot is behind the right just by about a foot or so. And then flex your right toe. So pull your toes back as you press, especially through the big toe mound of your right foot. I'll be giving you lots of alignment cues to help release your, the muscles of your body most effectively and efficiently. We have a short amount of time. You want to take advantage of it. So breathe here, turn your belly over your thigh as you fold. Such a good release after a run or a bike ride. Take two more deep breaths. Breathe in and out through your nose. And I like doing longer holds after my movement. Inhale, let's rise up, slide the block over. And then we'll bring the left foot ball mounds up onto the block. Right foot is just behind. For a pre-run or pre-activity routine, I might even do a little bit of bouncing here to loosen up. But afterwards, I like to hold the pose. So just make sure your left big toe mound is up on your prop. And then press firmly through the big toe mound as you turn your belly over your thigh and fold in. Try to engage the muscles of your legs as you stretch. So we're not passive here. We're actively working the pose. And at the same time, just soften through your shoulders and your neck. Take two more deep breaths. And then step off of your block. Set your block off to the side. Come on to hands and knees. And let's walk our hands forward on fingertips into what's known as puppy dog stretch. And as you do this, the arms are straight. Bring either your forehead to the floor, or if you can, you bring your chin to the floor. Then lift the shoulders, lift the upper arms towards the sky, and melt your chest down towards the earth. So as we know, after any kind of activity, we want to work through the whole body. It's not just quads and hamstrings, the spine, shoulders, neck as well. The key actions here, arm bones lift, heart sinks down. One more breath. And then inhale, slide up to all fours. Let's twist out the spine. Threading the right arm underneath, bring the right shoulder to the floor. If you can't quite bring it to the floor, you could have it off the floor or bring your right shoulder to a blanket. And then walk your left hand overhead and towards the right side of the mat. Look under your left arm and shift your hips over to the right. Another great release in the shoulders and the spine. So hips move right, left hip pulls back. Right, tack your left hip back. Inhale, release. Let's go to the second side. So left arm threaded under, left shoulder to or towards the floor as you come to the left side of your head. Right hand, walk it overhead and to the left. Shift your hips left as you look under your right arm. 
breathing. Next inhale, slowly unwind. And now prepare for downward facing dog. So hands just forward to the shoulders, spread your fingers, melt your chest towards the earth, and then lift your knees, stretch up and back. If your hamstrings are tighter, have your knees slightly bent. If you're able to, you'll work towards straighter legs. Maybe bend a knee and then stretch the other leg straight back and forth a few times. Loosening up hamstrings, calves, shoulders. With your next exhalation, bring your knees to the floor, slide your hands back, and come up to a kneeling position. You can bring your hands to your low back or just below the waistline to your sacral area. Press down and lift up through the chest. So we're lifting and finding a back bend here, working the spine, opening the chest. If you're able to, you could even bring hands to your heels. Press your chest towards the sky. And then with your inhale, come out of the back bend and just step your left leg forward to a lunge position, a low lunge. If it's too much on the knee, you can always pad it up with a blanket under the knee. Clasp your fingers on the front thigh, lunging into our low lunge position. Let's create some tone. So front foot, back knee, pull in towards each other. So we're strengthening as we're stretching and then reach your arms up alongside the ears. Lift your heart towards the sky. Good. Inhale, rise up. Now bring right hand to outer left thigh. Reach the left arm behind you. And if you're able to, bring your left hand to your outer right thigh. So you're going to pull your thighs in towards each other. If you can't quite reach your outer right thigh with your left hand, keep the arm extended back behind you for this twist. Looking over your left shoulder. Soft eyes, soft jaw. Inhale, a slow release. Now for a thigh stretch, left hand can rest on the left thigh or you could have the left hand on a block just to the inside of the front foot. Right hand reaches back for the foot. You could always use a belt as well or just stick to anjanea, the low lunge position. So pull the inner right heel towards the outer right hip could even flip the grip here. Oof. Nice quad stretch after a run. Bike ride, hike, whatever it is that you're doing. Playing ball, some kind of ball sport. Lifting through your chest. Good. Exhale and release. Now bring your hands to the floor and just scoot your left foot over to the right, coming into our pigeon pose. Now, the further forward your foot is, the more intense the stretch. So if you're tighter in the hips, you might need to pull it back. And then we'll fold forward to pigeon. If you're not able to work pigeon, you have a knee injury, something that keeps you from doing pigeon, come into seated figure four. You can just rest your left ankle above the right knee. In your pigeon, make sure your left knee is wider than your hip. It's not in line with the hip and activate your left foot. So toes are flexed. Even if you're still wearing your running sneakers, right, you still want to flex your toes and scissor the hips. Right hip draws forward, left hip draws back. Such a great release in the hip. Take one more breath here. And then inhale, rise up. We'll press back to downward dog. Bring your knees to the floor. Slide your hands back, hands to the low back, just below the waistline, lifting through the heart. For our camel pose, you could also go hands to heels. Inhale, lift through the heart, and step your right leg forward, lunge. Coming into our low lunge position, and go arms up alongside the ears, stretch it up. Right foot, left knee, pulling in towards each other. Good. 
feel like your shoulder blades are moving down your back and into your chest, lifting your heart. Inhale, rise out, left hand to outer right thigh, right hand to outer left thigh, looking over your right shoulder. Squeeze inner thighs towards the central line of the mat, towards the midline. Short, sweet, deep stretch. It's got everything. Inhale, release. Let's go for the quad stretch. Left hand reaching back for the left foot. Pull the left inner heel towards the outer left hip. Right foot, left knee drawing towards each other. So you feel tone in your legs, lift through your chest. Exhale, release, right foot, take it over to the left for our pigeon pose. Coming on the outer edge of the right foot, seated figure four, or even supine figure four, great alternative options. Scissoring your hips, left hip draws forward, right hip draws back. Try not to collapse in this pose and try not to sit on the right buttock. You wanna keep your hip points level. Breathe in and out through your nose. Relax your face. One more breath. Inhale. Slowly rise. We'll press back to downward dog. and bring your knees to the floor. If you have the space in your day, take a minute for a final relaxation position. You could lie on your back. I'm gonna do a small roll with a blanket and place this under the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. So I love this at the end of any activity, especially one like biking or running where you're hunched forward a bit. Even though I try to run upright, there still tends to be some hunching in a longer run. So either like this, bottom tips of shoulder blades, or flat on the floor, and you just hang out in your final resting position, giving up all the effort of your activities. It's letting everything go. I'm going to leave you here. If you can stay for a few minutes, please do so. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Never miss one of our three classes that we bring to the channel every week. And then, of course, the runners and athletes playlists. Be sure to check it out. Thanks so much for being here. Have a beautiful rest of your day.